actually is. It uh, takes some real data. I like this, real data. There it is. Okay. Time in seconds versus total heat release rate. You notice there's a model, and the, the, uh, what is it? the black is the experiment, and so the heat goes up, and down uh, 600 seconds is 10 minutes, and you see that by uh, 1800 seconds, half an hour, the heat is tapering off, and most of the heat is here. So you have a factor of well, about three after half an hour that the heat rate is down. Now after three and a half hours, you know, you're just not, uh, I, I don't know, do they think there's somebody in there continuing to push the uh, furniture and uh, paper towards this critical column 79? I don't know. No, no. So this, I appreciate their experimental data, but I don't appreciate their use of this type of a uh, model, and I expect us to take it uh, seriously. <clears throat> so, what, uh, your, your com again, uh, your computer model will allow you to do any crazy thing, but nature will not uh, do this, you see. Uh, they did, let's uh, answer a few questions. In Popular Mechanics in 2005, there was a statement that investigators believe the fire was fed by tanks of diesel fuel. In the NIST report, uh, this notion was thrown out. They said fuel oil fires did not play a role in the collapse of World Trade Center 7. Let's get that straight. But we're, we're still talking about office materials here then. You see? It's not, it's not diesel fuel fueling this for three and a half hours. It's paper and furniture and so on. Supposedly for three and a half hours. Now, I would like to see uh, this model you know, made available to scientists and engineers. How would architects for engineers, uh, architects and engineers from I love the truth like that, John? So we get that model, and we can probably figure out how to set the parameter for the heat transport to something other than zero. We look up the value in the table, and we set it to that. It's uh, easy to do that, I'm confident. And we can probably find out, uh, you know, how long the fire would actually burn then from their data and put that in there, model that up, put them down, model, put the accurate temperature profile in there, and see if the building would fail. Now, my guess is that it would not, but this is what we call independent checking. So when I publish a paper, I hope that other scientists will check it with experiments, or if it's a model, which I have done, with you know, their model, their parameters. I make available my data, I make my a model available, I expect this scientific courtesy from NIST. Taxpayer money, the taxpayer, please let me uh, then take a look at your model. Um, they declined to do this with their computer model of the towers. They explained the, the uh, uh, action at the towers the same way with the computer model. We would like to see this become available. It's one of my great goals to see greater transparency in government, and apparently one of President Obama, Obama's goals as well. <laughs> okay, we'll see. The heart of science is independent verification. And I will stand by that and ask them to uh, release this. Okay, so uh, in, on August 26th of last year, it was interesting, NIST held a uh, basically a public comment session in which I and others email questions and comments to NIST questions uh, were of primary interest to them. And then they responded, and you can see their response and that was uh, uh, taped. Now David and I, uh, David Chandler, and I both challenged NIST on their uh, preliminary report. Uh, they said that they used a constant speed estimate in looking at the um, fall of World Trade Center 7. But I had already found, working with a student, that the the building accelerates, you know, look at the roof line, for example, it accelerates as it falls. It's not a constant speed. And Chandler noticed that as well and had some data. And uh, it's interesting to watch their response. Uh, but in any case, they did, let's look at uh, Chandler's data, they did make some uh, calculation and some effort to respond to us, which is to their credit, you see. Now, my question about red gray chips, have they seen those? They skirted around that and didn't answer. So that's not to their credit, but 
that's another one of my goals, is to get these guys to you know, respond. But here they did. So here's Chandler's uh, data. Now, let me explain this a little bit. This is for the World Trade Center 7, northwest corner he's looking at. And he's plotting here the velocity of the northwest corner versus time in seconds. And this fit, if you look at the slope of a velocity versus time curve, students of Newtonian mechanics, this slope gives you the acceleration good over here. You get the credit for today. OK, the slope gives you the acceleration, which works out to about 9.8 something meters per second squared. This in here really should have a plus or minus, but that's OK. 9.81 is the accepted uh, acceleration due to gravity in free fall. That means nothing in the way. And you just drop a ball, preferably in a vacuum, but if it's a small sphere, it, it, air doesn't do too much. And you'll find the acceleration is right close to the, up to this value. But this is World Trade Center 7, and over a period of about two and a quarter seconds, you have free fall. Mm, nothing in the way. Okay, but, so what does NIST do? They, they didn't ignore it, they actually published it in their final report, they checked the reality, and this is great, they start a little later, that's fine, the slope is what matters here, alright student? The slope is what matters. Again, velocity versus time, and you see that their fit, the straight line is what's important here, the red line, and the uh, uh, fit gives you, oh, it's, here, they make it look fancy, it's fine, you can do a least squares fit, all you want, that's fine, but here's the value. Let's read what they say then in their final report. The slope of the velocity curve is approximately constant. Aha, that's the acceleration, right? The slope of the velocity curve between 1.75 seconds and 4, that's 2 and a quarter seconds. And a good straight line fit, yes, allowed estimation of a constant constant downward acceleration <clears throat> during this time interval. <clears throat> this acceleration was 32.2 feet per second squared. Amazing. Folks, that's G. Nothing in the way. It's just like dropping a ball. Remarkable. Quoting again from this, this free fall drop continued for approximately eight stories or 105 feet. That's a long ways. Eight stories. Out of the way. You know, get out of the way, everything. Now, uh, you've driven your car, right? And you, most of us have had the experience of hitting something. Maybe it's a, a small, but it slows you down when you hit anything, right? It's like that. Now, if there are floors in the way, it will slow you down. You won't get free fall acceleration if there are even floors in the way. For 105 feet, over 100 feet, there is nothing in the way. Now, how is this possible? Did they answer the question, how is this possible? That they failed to do. You would expect them to go back and say, well, we're going to have to fit this into our computer model. We'll have to adjust the parameter, uh, fix it up. <laughs> they didn't bother. What did they do? Now, see, this is where physics comes in. You understand a little physics? Say, you know, you, you, right, if something's falling, uh, you drop a ball. Free fall, right? And then you put something in the way, a book, uh, another ball, anything. What happens? It, it slows it down. <laughs> okay. okay. Forget the columns even, just mass in the way. It slows it down. No, but this is not right? yeah, a free fall. <clears throat> so what did they, oh, I've been discussing this. Nothing in the way. How do you get mass out of the way? Of course, explosives will do that, right? You just move the mass out of the way and you see this in controlled demolitions. They don't really answer, so here's what they do. They assert without proof that this free fall is consistent. That's their term, and I'm quoting here. <clears throat> it's just you know, one sentence they stick in to take care of this. It's consistent with the results of the global collapse analysis discussion.